Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Cesar Pluneda, a minimal invasive and robotic surgeon. Today I'm going to show you a laparoscopic ETEP approach that I did in a 42 year old female with a umbilical and supraumbilical hernia and supraumbilical diastasis rectus. This is her CT scan in which we can see uh, diastasis rectus of about four centimeters and a small supraumbilical hernia of about one centimeter and an umbilical hernia of about two centimeters. This is the position that I use to perform the surgery. I start the surgery by introducing a five millimeter port in the supraumbilical left side to decide the retrorectus space with my scope all the way down into the red shoes space. I perform smoothly movements to create the space from one side to the other, as you can see in the image. Once I have achieved enough space and I'm comfortable with it, I will introduce another five millimeter port to continue the dissection in order to create enough space in the left retrospective space and in the richest space and do the crossover in the suprapubic matter. I try to stay really close to the rectus muscles to diminish the possibility of creating peritoneal rims. It is easier in this patient because she hasn't had any C-section or surgical procedure in the pelvis. Once I'm comfortable with the dissection that I did, I introduce a 10 millimeter port right in the midline to continue my dissection of the right side. I know that there are the epigastric vessels and I perform my dissection right underneath it with the five millimeter scope until I see the right retrorectus space and I continue this section until I'm comfortable to introduce energy to continue my dissection and create this space to introduce my last five millimeter sports from my left hand. Now I am comfortable with the dissection that I have done and I will introduce my last port. Taking in mind that if I introduce them lateral to the epigastric vessels, uh, I will diminish the risk of injuring these vessels during my introducing of the instruments of work. Now I will dissect the right retrorectus space all the way up to the subcostal area. I try to use energy only in the midline and only a traumatic dissection 
in the lateral side to diminish the risk of injuring the semilunar line. Once I'm comfortable with my right dissection, I will start my uh, upper crossover by doing an incision in the posterior rectus sheet about one centimeter, half a centimeter down of the midline. And with this movement of my hand, I will separate the fat of the preperitoneal space to discover in the upper side the midline, the anterior rectus sheet, as you can see, and the change of color. It's a darker color in the right side where the right rectus rectus sheet starts. I perform an incision over there and I will continue my dissection. At this point, I'm reaching the super umbilical hernia, as you can see, and I am not able to reduce the fat with the movement I did a small peritoneal rim. As you can see, the cavity is diminishing, so I decided to perform the dissection bottoms up, entering the preperitoneal space and incising the posterior rectus sheet. I will change my energy as I feel comfortable, either monopolar or ligature energy. I am trying to reach the upper incision of the posterior rectus sheet that I did in the right side to connect both the spaces. And as I mentioned it before, I will go from one side to the other as I feel comfortable. Trying to avoid the injury of the peritoneum to create the less of the peritoneal rims as possible. Here is the volcano sign. And I'm going to start the section of the addition of the umbilical hernia and the reduction of the content of the hernia, that is, reperitoneal fat. Always having in mind that it's better to create a peritoneal rim than to get into the bronch space by injuring the midline.
once I have done this, uh, this section, I will check out my posterior sheet in the peritoneum to close all the peritoneal rims that I did. I continue my dissection a little bit further to get behind the side feed process and just above the costal margin. Here we can see the rectus diastasis. Uh, there are three small defects, that's the supraumbilical defect. There is another one smaller there. And the umbilical hernia. So I will now start closing my midline with the Venetian modification. I do these small stitches to make it tension free. I will draw several stitches and when I'm getting without shooter, I will tighten it up. In this patient, I use two Bilog sutures. Not absorbable one we look. I will keep doing this all the way down to get a really good closure of the midline, as you can see here. And then I will introduce a mesh of 30 by 20. I usually do not put any fixation method 
when I do these surgeries. And if I do not perform a tar, I will not use a drain. These are her scars right after the surgery or routine. Thank you very much.